So last week, when we were talking about flashes, if you remember, a couple of important points that we made were there are a couple of different reasons to use a flash in crisis photography. In fact, we identified in particular three very important reasons why you use a flash. One, we use a flash first and foremost when we just don't have enough light, right? It's too dark. We definitely use flashes when the color of the thing we're taking the photo is important. We gave examples of if you're photographing a tattoo, uh, a bruise, some other sort of wound, a car, blood. You guys all know, by the way, that blood changes colors as it ages, right? Yeah. Blood is nice and fresh and is bright beet red at first, but then as it ages, it turns brown. Actually, it starts to look a little bit almost like chocolate syrup after a year or so. So the coloring of the blood tells us something. Right, so certainly, we use a flash when there's not enough light. We use a flash when the color of the thing we're taking a photo is important enough. And then we use a flash when we're either trying to eliminate or create shadows. Eliminate or create shadows. We went on to talk about, <coughs> with flash, there are three main types of flashes, right? Well, actually, before we, sorry, that's not true. We said there's two main types <coughs> of flashes, bulb flashes and electronic flashes. We don't use bulb flashes anymore. We use electronic flashes. And we also learned that another name for an electronic flash is what? A strobe flash, like a strobe light, right? Now, when it comes to strobe flashes, there are three varieties. Three varieties of strobe flashes. What are they again? Automatic, semi-automatic, semi and hybrid. Now, what are some of the other names for automatic flashes? They might also be called what? Dedicated or TTL. We learned that TTL means through the lens, through the lens. Because we know that an automatic flash is controlled by whom? <coughs> Who controls the flash? The camera controls the flash. And it does that by determining the level of output necessary by making a meter reading through the lens. So the camera's light meter determines how much light is needed, and then the camera either turns the flash up or down in terms of its power. Now when we have a semi-automatic flash, what's built into the front of a semi-automatic flash? It has its own light meter. So when we use a semi-automatic flash, if it's in automatic mode, who controls the flash? The camera does not control the flash. The flash controls itself. It uses its own built-in light meter to adjust its output. So remember, on the front of your semi-automatic flash, there's this light meter right here. And so if I, if I have this flash on top of my camera, I was taking a picture of Jimmy there. This light meter is, is measuring the light bouncing off of my subject. And so it's going to turn the flash up or down as necessary. When it's in auto mode. But remember, a semi-automatic flash operates in two modes. One of them is auto, and the other one is what? Manual. Now, when this flash is in manual mode, who controls the output power of the flash? I do. I can turn it up or turn it down. And I demonstrated that. I can turn it up really high so it's really bright, or I can turn it down so that when it fires, it fires at a lower power. Right? That's the kind of where we were last time. Well, that's correct. And if it's um, um, manual mode, I control it. Yeah, the operator. Yes, yeah, Del. Up and down. Okay, so it, go ahead and turn your. So that's a good question. Del asked the question. If if it's in manual mode, how do I turn it up or down? Everybody, turn your flash on. I went over this last time, but it's a refresher. Turn your flash on. It doesn't matter if it's on or off your camera. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just turn it on. And then remember, on the back of your flash, there is a button on the left hand side that says mode. Push that button a couple times until you get the letter M in the top left hand corner. Push the button that says on off. <coughs> now, when you have it in the M mode, right, right next to the letter M, there's a fraction. So if you're looking at the back of your flash, so we're looking at the LCD screen, so we're looking at that little screen there, and then we have the letter M, and then right next to that letter M, there should be a fraction. It might say probably 1 over 1. When that is at 1 over 1, that means that this flash is going to fire at full power. And let's do that. Everybody take your flash, tilt the head of the flash forward towards me, 
You're all going to give me a chance to turn around so I don't get hit in the face. <laughs> all right, but what you're going to do is once your flash is on and it's in set at one, and by the way, how do I adjust it if it's not one over one? That was the question that Dell asked. This little thumb pad here. We have a plus up top and a minus. I can push up or down to adjust that fraction. If it's not one over one, if it says one over four or one over eight, if I push up the plus sign, right? So on my flash, there's a button right here, and there's a plus up top and a minus. If this fraction is reading, for example, one eight, that's not full power, that's one eighth power. So if I push up the plus a couple times, it'll change this fraction to one over one. That is full power, full brightness. What does it mean when you say stay on? It means that your batteries are a little low. Just push the shutter release button on your camera a little bit to, to take it back off standby. What's the um, the fraction that pops up at the side that says like one third dB? Okay, that that's uh, what's called an exposure compensation. I'll tell you more about that later. Okay. What I'd like everyone to do, please, is adjust that fraction, the one that's next to the letter N, to 1 over 1. Do that for me now, please. All right, so now, once you've done that, your flash is at full power. Now, looking at the back of your flash, there's a little button that says flash. And if you push that, don't push it yet. <laughs> when you do push that, it's going to set the flash off. And it'll set it off at whatever power level you have it set at. Right, so I'm going to set mine off. I'll put it at the ceiling. I'm going to set it off right now. That's full power. I want you guys to go ahead and point it up front and set your flash off at full power. Go ahead and do that now. You ready for Caesar? All right. Wait, quick. Yeah, that's why I have these on. All right. So now, now what I want you to do is now we're going to turn it down. Now we're going to turn it down to. 1 16th power. So we're going to decrease the flash's intensity to 1 16th its full power. So simply push that up or down button and change that fraction to 1 over 16. All right. And then go ahead and set your flash off again. So I'm going to go ahead and push that button, set my flash off. Again, a lot lower that time, right? Not nearly as bright. In fact, I can still face you guys and I'm not getting blinded because your flash is not going off at full power. So in manual mode, who adjusts this thing? I do. In automatic mode, it will go off sometimes at full power or sometimes at 1 16th power, but who's adjusting it then? The flash adjusts itself. When it's in TTL mode, the camera's adjusting it by making a measurement through the lens using its built-in light meter. You with me so far? Okay, go ahead and turn your flash back off. Let's save the batteries for now. Just push on and off until it turns off. Now, just because we're using the flash, does that mean then, does that mean that we no longer have to consider exposure? No. Can we still have pictures that are too bright, too dark? Yes. Yeah, we have to be careful of that still, don't we? Now, here's the thing, though, about using the flash. Remember our four-step process that we went through to take photos, F-A-S-T? What was T? Test. And what were, what were we using to do our test? We are using the light meter in the camera. T changes when you use the flash. It's still a test, but we're not using that light meter anymore. Because if you were to use the light meter, it's going to read negative because you don't have enough light. That's the whole reason you're using the flash is because it's negative. Keep in mind, though, when you go to take your photo and the flash goes off, you're going to have more light. So how do we figure out? A moment ago, we turned the flash to full power or to one quarter power or one sixteenth power. How do we figure out at what level to have that flash fire at? Because if we don't do it right, our photos are not going to be properly exposed. If I took a picture of Polita here, who's only about five feet away from me, if I had that flash pointed at her and it fired at full power, you think that photo's going to turn out right? No, it's probably going to be what? Too bright, too bright. All right. So just because we're using the flash doesn't mean that we disregard exposure. And when it comes to exposure, there are really three variables that we have to consider when using flash. And the first one is distance. How close or how far away I am from my subject. 
We talked about this last time. This is a little bit of a review. Because remember, what happens to light as it travels outwards, as it, as it, it goes up? It, yeah, it starts, to, it starts to dissipate. It becomes less intense. It becomes diluted. In fact, actually, light adheres to something called the inverse square law. I think I have a slide here showing inverse square law. The inverse square law says that as the distance between the light and the subject increases, the amount of light hitting the subject is an inverse exponential relationship. All right, what does that mean? As you double the distance, you cut the amount of power or the amount of light by one quarter. All right? So to help maybe understand that, Let's say I was shining a flashlight at Paulina here, all right, and, and, and she's about five feet away from me. Now remember light, there are multiple ways to measure light. One of the ways is to measure it using a unit called lumens. So let's assume that if I was hitting Paulina with light, let's say she was being hit with 100 lumens. We would be so all right, so she's five feet away. She's being hit with 100 lumens of light. Pretty bright. She'd have a hard time looking. Now, uh, let's say we go to Crystal, who's about twice as far. So she's 10 feet away. So she's twice as far. Does that mean that she would be being hit with half as much light? No, it actually means she'd be being hit with one quarter as much light. So if you double the distance, so if Pauline is sitting here and she's being hit with 100 lumens, because light is separating and spreading outwards, if you doubled the distance, the relationship, the amount of light would be 1 over the multiple of distance squared. So 1 over 2 squared. Or in other words, 1 quarter as much light. What if I was taking a photo of Jasmine, who is now three times as far away as Polita is? How much light would be hitting her? Well, if she's three times as far, 3 squared is 9, so she would be being hit with one ninth as much light. Does that make sense? So ultimately, you don't have to remember any of this math. The ultimate thing to remember is light does what very quickly? It dissipates very quickly. So when we're determining exposure with the flash, the distance between you and your subject is very critical. Okay? The other variables I need to know I need to know what aperture I'm using because I'm going to open or close the aperture largely depending upon how close my subject is. If I was taking a photo of Polita who's only about five feet away from me, do you think I want my aperture all the way open or do you think I want to close it down a little bit? I probably want to close it down a little bit because she's so close, a lot of the light from my flash is going to in fact hit her. And so actually, I could have it be overexposed. So as a result, I need to close it down a little bit. Now, if I was taking a photo of Ron, who's about 20 feet away from me, he's a lot farther away, what am I probably going to do with my aperture now? I'm going to have to open it up. So we're going to start to see that there's a relationship between how close the subject is and how wide open or closed down my aperture is. And then there's one other variable I need to know. And we talked about this last time. In fact, it's the last thing we talked about before we left last week. And what is that? How powerful this flash is. How bright it is, right? In a flashlight, we measured in lumens, right? With a flash, how do I know how powerful this flash is? There's a number. What is it? Look at your notes. It's called, the guide, it's called the guide number, exactly right. The guide number tells me how bright this flash is, it, or at least it gives me a rough idea. The larger the guide number, please write this in your notes, make sure you highlight it, circle it. The larger a flash's guide number, the more powerful it is, the brighter it is. So the larger a flash's guide number, the more powerful it is. Take this large flash that you've got on top of your camera right now. Go ahead and take that off if you would, please. Take it off your flash. Take it off, take it off of the camera. So take the flash off the camera, set it aside for a second. Go so, stick your camera for a second. I'll do it back. That's right. <laughs> right, so uh, we, we have this really big external flash, right? This one's pretty bright. Right? If, I, if I shine it right in your face, set it off, it, it might do some damage, actually. 
But remember, our camera, this little camera, has its own flash. Remember this little pop-up flash? That's a flash too, right? Now, of the three types, by the way, dedicated, semi-automatic, and hybrid, if you remember, we said hybrid is simply a flash that can be either. This flash happens to be a hybrid. But this flash built into the camera, is this dedicated or semi-automatic? What are you thinking? It's definitely a dedicated flash. This is definitely an automatic flash because you have no control over it, and it doesn't have its own light meter. This flash is controlled by what? The camera. So if I were to take a picture, if I were to point my camera at Polita, the light meter is measuring light coming through the lens, determining how much light is needed, and then it sets the flash off based on that measurement. This is a dedicated flash. Please write this in your notes. All built-in flashes are dedicated flashes. So if your camera has a built-in flash, if it's built into the camera, it must be a dedicated flash. It's going to be automatic. You have no control over it. Is it adjustable by me? How bright is it? Is it adjustable by me? No, it can be adjusted. The camera can adjust it, yes. So that's a good question. So, for example, if I was taking a photo of Polita, who's only five feet away from me, do you think the camera's going to have this flash fire all the way? No, because it would be what? Overexposed. But then if I pointed the camera at Ron, who's much farther away, guess what the camera's going to do? It's going to turn the flash out. But again, am I controlling that? No. Is the flash controlling itself? No. No, who's controlling the flash? The, the camera. camera is, right? So, all built-in flashes are dedicated, okay? Now, what about this flash? We call these flashes, get your question in just a second. These flashes are going to be called external flashes because they're not built into the camera. You would attach it to the camera, right? So here we have an external flash. Okay. Now, here's the question. External flashes. Are external flashes dedicated or semi-automatic? Well, they could be either, all right, or both. This one, this one, is a hybrid, which means that if I put it in TTL mode, it becomes dedicated. If I put it in automatic or manual mode, it becomes semi-automatic. However, there are some external flashes that are only dedicated. You put it on top of the camera, and you cannot operate it manually. So it's important to understand external flashes, some of them are only dedicated. Some external flashes are only semi-automatic, which means you can never put them in a dedicated TTL mode. This is especially true of a lot of like aftermarket flashes that are not brand specific. This happens to be a Nikon speed light flash, which means it's meant to be operated with a Nikon camera. But there are other off, not, let's say off-brand meaning brands that are not Nikon, which a Nikon can use. But they're not going to be dedicated because the Nikon camera, it's important to understand that with a dedicated flash, the camera and the flash talk to each other. If you have a flash that's not Nikon, it can't speak the same language as the camera, and so they're not going to be dedicated. They can still be uh, semi-automatic, automatic, but they're not going to be dedicated. This happens to be a hybrid. It's a Nikon flash, which allows it to work with a Nikon camera in a TTL mode, but we can also put it in an automatic or manual mode, which makes it semi-automatic. Do we understand that? So, all built-in flashes are dedicated, all right? External flashes, can they be dedicated? Yes. yes. Can they be semi-automatic? Yes. yes. Can they be both? Yes. yes. All right. That makes sense? You got that? Okay, good.